basically, um, my background, brief background, my first degree was in pharmaceutical science, and I said straight after that I did um, a master's in information systems design. So I was trying to say that at the point where I started off my career, it, it wasn't really called business, and you could be a business application, um, development specialist, etc. Um, but at that point in time, the role BA was not really very well defined. It was a transition between systems. I don't want to spend so much time on myself. But basically, from then on, I've moved on into different roles, um, where I've worked as a business analyst or systems analyst or whatever you call it. So I've worked in different industries. Um, and currently, I work for Sony Computer Entertainment, which is PlayStation. That's enough about myself. I might go back to my CV at the end. The only reason I'll do that is because I would use it to sort of explain the real life scenarios of when I finish explaining what it is in the life of a BA. So we may go back to that. But I'm going to go straight back onto my slide and I'm going to be starting about now. Just wait for everyone to settle in. Um, so thanks for coming to the session. I'm not going to make any assumptions that everybody knows what a business analyst is. But I'm going to try and start from the beginning, give you an explanation of what business analysis is about, etc., etc., walk you through. So for those of you who know what a business analyst is, pardon me, but I think it's good in terms of trying to explain to you what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. I could just say I come into the office, blah, blah, blah. It wouldn't make any sense. So to help us, one of the things I'm going to do to start with is to first of all give you an introduction of myself. I'll give you the objective of the session. And I'll start with a glossary. Usually, when you look at a document, it's usually at the end. But the reason why I'm going to start, so that people that don't have an understanding of what the definition is, when I start talking, it's not alien to you. So quickly, so this session is obviously to give you an insight into the life of what a business analyst. I will try and use real life scenarios if we can at the end, like I said, using my CVs or maybe while I'm talking to explain to you what the role of a business analyst might entail. If I talk too fast, tell me, just raise your hand and I'll like, but I'm trying to rush based on the timeline. So hopefully, one of the things you should get out of this session is for those who want to get into being a business analyst, you should get clarity as to what the role would involve, if it's the right fit for you. Because I'm sure some of you might be thinking, maybe I want to go into project management, so business analysis. But hopefully, I'll try to give you an understanding of what the role of a BA entails. The second thing is that I want to try and highlight to you what the skills, some of the skills you would need to be a business analyst, some of the key skills that are involved and to try and give you examples of maybe when you get into a role, why you won't probably be demonstrating some kind of skills, why you might need to go into a role demonstrating some other aspects of um, a skill. So also, if I can, in the time I've been given, I'll try and um, explain to you how you can adapt into different organizational settings, function effectively, and remain relevant, and survive the challenges, I'm telling you, that can be quite a few challenges. If I can, I would explain. So like I said, in order to get us onto the same page, let me just explain some basics. So people hear, oh, project, what is a project? So it's a simple example. A project is defined as a group of related activities to achieve a specific goal. So if you want to build a house, it's sort of a project buying the materials, everything is a project. If you want to um, build a new computer system, it's a project. So the tasks that are entailed, combined, forms a project. So when people talk about projects, it's not only IT systems. Sometimes setting up a shop can be termed a project. So the point of sourcing for the site, getting the permission, getting all the materials, that's a project. Moving on quickly. When you hear the word stakeholders, if I mention it, what does it mean? Anyone that is impacted by a project is a stakeholder. So a stakeholder is anyone that has an interest. So if you were building a coffee shop, the people that are going to be drinking the coffee, they're your stakeholders because they have an interest or are impacted by your project. The guy next door is a 
stakeholder because he wants to know that his business, you have to take his own interest into consideration. The person supplying you is a stakeholder. The council giving you the permission, those, that's what is referred to as a stakeholder. So you are all, so it's not an alien word when you hear it. So if it's an IT system, the person you're developing the system for the user is a stakeholder, the manager is a stakeholder, the software developer is a stakeholder, the project manager is a stakeholder, even yourself, your term is a stakeholder. Then when you hear the word requirements, requirements is just the need. What do you want to do? So if someone says requirements, it means, okay, if I want to do, if you were the person, like a project model analyst, asked to come and evaluate building a house, the requirement would be, how do you want the house to look? How many bedrooms? That's a requirement. So when you hear requirements, in the software terms, it would be, um, what do you want it to look like? What is the purpose? Is it to sell goods? Is it to sell services? So when you hear the word requirements, that's the needs of the business. And most projects always have a beginning and an end point to achieve a particular goal. Yeah? So another thing I'll mention is the system development life cycle. So a project will have a life cycle. In IT terms, it's the stages at which you are doing a project. So for building a house, your foundation is a stage. Pouring the concrete is another stage. Putting, building the brick is another stage. Completing the roof is another stage. Doing your plastering is another stage. Doing your wiring. So in system terms, everything too has a life cycle. It has an initiation, um, requirements phase, planning phase. I'll go through all this in the fly, but um, sorry, a space up front. You've not missed much, I'm just trying to explain some terms, so um, hopefully if you're lost at the end, I'll hang about, you can ask me. Yeah. There are two seats here, I know it's not the best place, but I'm fine. So I'll carry on. So I've just defined some terms so that when I start talking, you're not going to be confused. Think what does she mean by a project? There are still going to be some terms you don't understand, but I'll try and simplify it. So what is, it, what is business analysis? According to the IABA, which is one of the associations like the BCS, a business analysis is a set of tasks and techniques used to work to set as to work as a layers and among stakeholders. Now you see the term, yeah? In order to understand the structure, policies, and operations of an organization and the rec and recommend solutions that enable an organization to achieve the goal. Very technical. Let's move on to another one. A business analysis or business analysis practice is enabling change in an organizational context by defining needs and recommending solutions that deliver value to stakeholders. Is it beginning to make sense because of the explanation? Still a bit complex, yeah? A bit simpler. So, business analysis is the discipline of recognizing business needs and finding solutions to various problems. Simpler. But let me try and bring it a bit home, in my own way, how I see myself as a business analyst. So this is my own term. A business, no, a business analyst is, okay, this is a definition, sorry. A business analyst is an agent of change. So basically, you will go into an organization tasked with a problem to, or problem, and told, hey, come and help us to find out how we can overcome this problem. So you have to do some kind of investigation. So if, like I said, if it's in terms of building a house, you've got someone that has no clue, and you could be the one that is asked, Okay, please, I need to build a house. I even have no clue. Where do I start from? You can tell them, oh, you need to get planning permission. So you're there to sort of pull together all the pictures and elements at some point to help them to get to a particular goal. You may not necessarily be the builder, but you can be called to analyze the situation. So, like I said, I've been asked for a role as a business analyst to come and try and help them to document how to set up a shop. So, like, maybe Costa wants to replicate that process 
or setting up a shop. They want someone to just document that so they can do exactly the same thing. So it's to come up with a solution. It's not necessarily the developing an IT system. Yeah? Next one, a bis business analysis focus on delivering business value and ensuring that stakeholders' needs are met. So if you notice the pattern, you're there to help the stakeholders or the people achieve a goal or a need. This is a BCS definition. I'm not going to go. These are technical definitions, but hopefully I'll provide a slide. And if you want to delve in further, that's fine. So it's sort of like a consultant role, it says. Responsibility of investigation of business situations, identifying and evaluating options for improving business system, defining requirements, ensuring blah, 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 blah. So for me, how do I see myself as a business? In layman terms. This is how I see myself as a business analyst, and this is my own definition based on what I do. So you're like a detective, really, sometimes, I would say. You're employed to carry out a detailed investigation of the scenario, let's say a crime scene, from a different perspective in order to provide answers, resolve an issue, or achieve an expected outcome. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So I'm trying to fly through because we've got not enough time. So hopefully, understanding what business analysis is in and understanding what a business analyst is, what is the scope of a BA role? When you say, what is the scope of a BA role? You're trying to say, what areas do you cover as a BA? So a business analyst works at different levels in an organization. So sometimes they work at top level, management level, sometimes they're in the IT department, sometimes they're mid-level. So um, they can be involved in anything from defining strategy. So when you talk of strategy, that's at the top level, business analysts can be involved to help form a company's vision. So a company might say, oh, we want to be the biggest distributor and supplier than our um, third uh, competitors. They will bring a business. So those business analysts <coughs> work strategically. They may not be technical. They don't know anything about IT systems. But the knowledge is helpful. So at some point, at the extreme, you've got the business analysts that work at that level. So to help categorize this based on the examples I've just said, you've got the strategic level. Let me use my pointer. Then there's the systems analysis level, which is at the other extreme. So this, when they say the systems analysis level, I think somehow that's where the role of the current BA sort of evolved, per se. So you're at the level of IT, IT department, going into there, working with the technicians to write up specs. Sorry, when I say specs, write up plans of how they would draw out the new computer system so that's the extreme, someone that is very technical. And on the other extreme, you have someone that is very strategic. But really, a business analyst should lie somewhere in between. Or you can try in between. And they sort of say it straddles between both levels. So when you're looking for a role, sometimes take note of such things by the terms they use. And sometimes, so where you see, sometimes you see roles where you, they use the words like target operating model process, a lot of times those are nearly at that level, but you also have roles that are in the middle. Then sometimes they say business analysts developing a system, HR system analyst, then they are talking of the systems part. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on quickly. So I'm going to sort of summarize quickly. I'm not going to go through every point. So at the strategic analysis level, most of the time business analysts at that level work at senior management they undertake strategic analysis. They have to, to be able to operate in that level. You can't be someone who doesn't understand the area of the business. So you can't be someone. So for someone like me, because I have, I did my introduction, I have a pharmaceutical background. It would help if I was working because I understand the industry. Because I have a finance background, I think it would make a better having that knowledge. Not that you can't, because actually, with my experience, luckily, I've had to do strategic roles where I have obtained knowledge by reading. I used to hate finance. Not 
but I've read. I have to do the reading myself to understand about balance sheets, profits and loss, and how everything to understand finance because I was praying a uh, strategic role, so I needed to know how to be able to deliver that change. Because if they tell me something, how am I going to be able to tell them, oh, this is the best way to go? Are you, am I making sense? So in those areas, there are techniques that you use as a business analyst. So some of the techniques there is like PESO, most with me, some of you that have started reading will be seeing the test books. So people that are at that top level, they're concerned about things that um, impact the business externally. They're concerned about how can we improve our strength, weakness, opportunities, and threat. So those are some of the techniques a lot of those business analysts will use. So moving on quickly again, at the systems analysis, the other extreme, you work a lot with the IT team. So a lot of time, it's nice to know or have the IT jargon knowledge. So sometimes I tell people, if you want to be, depending on what side you feel comfortable, you don't necessarily need to have the IT jargon, but it is very, very useful. Sometimes ago, I know they had a database session. How, understanding how all this thing pull together is very helpful because when you are coming up with recommendations, you can already start visualizing and seeing systems. You can make important inputs into um, a lot of these areas. So, but on the systems analysis side, a lot of the techniques you would employ would be like data modeling. Who's heard about data modeling? So, where they tell you to draw the tables. You now say in a computer system that maybe in the library, you have the librarian, the books. So you need to be able to document because you need to understand how, if we're going to lay that information. Sometimes now, luckily still, we still have people who function in that technical level that you as a business analyst, you don't need to do that actually. But it helps. So when you're striking conversations with people at that level to gather requirements, you can say, um, so sometimes you can go and get a requirement as in a need. Oh, and a user tells you, I have a problem with my interface. Anytime I enter this information, for someone that doesn't have the IT jargon, you're already lost. So you would need some of those technique skills, etc., to operate in whatever area. You can avoid some of them, and I'll explain further. So, like I said previously, when you're not talking about business, it straddles between the gap. So it can be more on this side, it can be more to the other side. So a business analyst may be required to make recommendations, which is one thing I mentioned. A business analyst may be asked to focus specifically on enhancing or replacing an IT system. And to tell you the truth, a lot of time, those things happen strategically. So if you want to say, we want to be the best supplier, blah, blah, blah in your organization against competitors. Nowadays, you still have to have that IT knowledge to know what are your competitors. And most of the things that enhance business now is usually technology. So faster delivery, you need to. So having that knowledge still at every level has its game. Quickly. So now, when I'm going to go on to key competences. So a lot of these things are in the business analysis textbook. I have it somewhere. You can read up on them, or you can Google it and find it. So when you're talking of key competencies of a BA, we're talking about the skills, techniques, knowledge you would need to be able to function as a business. They are grouped into some categories. So, so professional techniques. When you're talking about professional techniques, these are the courses when people say, I'm going on a BA course. A lot of this are the courses which have been created by the BCS, etc., or people that provide training. They try and give you this professional techniques or tools to help you to get to that business analysis job. But there are other skills that are important that form part of the core competences. Business knowledge, which is what I said. So business knowledge is knowing about the area, being a subject matter expert in that area, which in most of these areas is, could be based on your background, but it could be based on reading or acquiring those knowledge. You can get it yourself, really. Thank God for Google. That's what I was saying. <laughs> personal qualities, very important. I think they normally say personal um, qualities. 
sort of holds those two. Why? As a business analyst, you engage a lot with people. You can't avoid it. Sometimes, maybe, maybe depending, like really, like I've said in one of the slides, a business analyst role varies across organization, across what part you are brought in in the stage of the project. So you could get away with it, but how long? Because nowadays, it's either one project is gone, you move on to the next project. The project is not an um, infinity. It always has an end. So personal qualities like communication, etc. I'll talk through some of them. But let me give you a context of what is contained. So personal qualities, communication, very important. You're going to be talking to technical people sometimes. You're going to be talking to managers. So you need to know how to communicate. Sometimes communication is not in the talking alone. Your document communication. So if I should do some documents I've created, it speaks a lot of languages, a page, but it's communicating a lot and it has to be clear. So that if a tester takes that document away because you would provide them, they need to be, know what they're doing. They don't want to start coming because if not, it just makes the whole process cumbersome. So communication, relationship building, I was explaining, we were having a joke out there. Relationship building, important. And people, I know it's not very easy. It's not something that everyone is prone to. Some people go to the office and just stay at their desk and just catch the eyes of people and just, as a business analyst, it's very important. It's very important to engage with people. Cleaners, anyone, just give them a smile. Walk past people. There's some people, they don't talk to you. I greet them 30 times. And it's always paid because by the time I go to them, the answer, but I always, it's relationship building, as in going out of the way for people sometimes. I don't know, some stakeholders can be difficult. This may be a manager, will give you the information. The junior person, if you're friendly, will tell you this is what you want to get. So relationship building, being friendly, it helps, I would say. I'm gonna rush through influencing, you have to have a level of influence because you have to convince. So, you know, nobody likes change. So sometimes, if they wanted to do something new in an organization, people push back. And these are the same people you need to ask, what do you want, or what would be the impact of this? So you have to have that kind of influence and say, and sort of drive home the point that needs to be made. There's so many things, team working, you need to be able to work in teams, political awareness, office politics. Sometimes it exists everywhere, I hate it but you have to be able to survive. You have to be able to know how to just play it. I don't play politics, but I try and avoid it, but take an advantage of it where possible. You need to have an analytical skill, critical thinking. That's why I said it's like a detective. I've been in a project where I went into an office. Someone was supposed to hand over. They don't have documents. Somebody was supposed to hand over the information to you, and the person said, I'm going away. I'll be back one week, never returned. So you have to start digging. You have to start thinking. You have to think, OK, if this, and you, you have to pull information. So you do investigation. You have to dig for information, collate this information to start even begin making sense of the mess. Yeah. So analytical skills, critical thinking. It, you have to learn to think on your feet. Yes, it happens. Because sometimes you could be in a meeting, and someone just throws a question. And they expect you. That is the analyst to know the answer. But one thing I say, if you don't know, don't say. Say, I'll tell you. Exactly. Because if not, don't say. It will come back and haunt you. And to tell the truth, it's not worth saying what you don't know. I don't think you make a fool of yourself. I think you make a fool of yourself if you said and they found out it's wrong. Attention to detail. Very important. Problem solving. That's why I, give it. That's why I say it's like a crime scene. You always know when you see something, you say, no, but why? Why? If this happened, but are you sure there's a root cause of the issue? You're saying that this system is not saving, but yet I can see that your system should be updated to Windows 2000. You need to start, it's like problem you. Sometimes when you're finding out requirements, sometimes because people do things, what is the word? They do things like a robot, you know, autopilot. Sometimes they think something is a problem, but because they do it automatically, they forget that things have changed and they're not. So sometimes that's why some of the analysis techniques involve you sitting and just watching people do things, observation, they call it. Um, so I'm going to run through leadership, self-belief, 
So business knowledge, which is another part I mentioned, the skills you need, finance and the economy, as in how does everything, as I say, how does it affect the bottom line? That's really, so you still always need to know, there's always a budget, there's always this, and you think that the economy, so like now, if there's a project, some of the projects they told me to do, in my mind I'm already thinking, oh, Brexit. How does Brexit impact what we're going to do? So we have data protection laws, that is EU data protection. I start thinking about that now, and sometimes I'm thinking, you have to be careful. So that's where you need to, so don't think that those things they say do not have an impact. You just take it as news, or really, Think about it when you're working on projects. They are critical. So, so you hear, oh, the stock market crashed and something like that. And meanwhile, maybe something that you were meant to be developing was dependent because things always has an impact on the overall outcome. So if you're building a house, will the cost of the material become cheaper? Mm -hmm. As the pound is falling, does it mean it wait? So those are the sort of things sometimes you can take back and say, maybe we should wait for two months before we start building. Because they said, oh, maybe we should build now. The price of pound, we're not going to get something. So those are the sort of things you think about when they say finance. That's why they said business knowledge. The business case development, business case in project terms is why you would justify having a project done. So you have to like bring in a case to say, this is the option of what we can do. We can do this, we can build a bungalow, we can build a duplex, or we can do nothing and stay and rent, which is a do nothing option. So. There's a document as a business analyst that's called a business case. That's what that document sort of does. You sort of try and justify to the people who are going to bring out the money why you would go for building a duplex, a bungalow, or staying in your flat. So rushing through domain knowledge. Domain knowledge is understanding if you're in the finance industry, if you're this. Subject matter expert, same way, being an expert. So if you have a good background in maybe programming, you could use that as an advantage as well. Principles of IT, so that's why I said, whatever, you need to still have knowledge of what IT is. So basic thing, how does the database work? How does, because if it's a system, try and understand how an IT system works. Because everything we're doing now, it's all going online, how does, just the basic, you don't need to know how to code. Just sometimes it helps because a lot of jobs are tending towards that direction organizational structures are also important to understand. So when you go into a company, how is it structured? Boss, who takes the orders, who takes this? It's sometimes good to know all these things. Supplier management, when they say supplier management, supplier management is like if they employ someone. So sometimes some companies don't develop all their software in-house. They use third parties or external vendors. So when they say supplier management, those are the people they're referring to. Sometimes you, as a business analyst, may need to be the one telling them they are based in India, you are based in the UK, they want to develop the software, you are writing. So, so far, you are managing that relationship. Yeah? Professional techniques, so these are some of the skills. Project management, still part of the BCS skills. Um, these are, like I said, these are all the courses that are available in BCS. When people train, I know people do private training, some people just combine everything into one, but a lot of all the um, courses, data modeling, managing business change, facilitation techniques. Facilitation techniques is how you get information. How do you go out and obtain information? Um, let me see my time. Okay. Responsibility of a BA. So like I was saying, a business analyst typically works on projects which usually involves implementation implementing a technology solution as part of a corporate organization. One of the aspects that makes it interesting is the range of projects. So like I said, it's not only IT systems. It could be a project to set up a new, um, so build a house, like I said. Yeah, very, so sometimes actually a project could just be, we want to improve the way we, um, we deliver goods to our customers. That's a project. It's not, nothing to do, but at the back of it, there will still be IT because the customers, you want that interface. You want to be able to ask information to say, next day delivery. But the project is not about, we want a new IT system, but at the back of it, it may still have an impact on the IT system. Um, so, 
responsibilities of a business that requires them to perform different tasks during different phases of a project and switch roles based on the project life cycle. Um, I was saying, for those who weren't here, a project life cycle, let me give you just a basic example. So if I would put it this way, I'm using a build in the house because I think most people. So for every house that is built, there's sort of a template foundation, put in the decking, probably the walls go up, then the roofing, plastering, electricals. So that is sort of the life cycle of building a house in a sense. So for a project, a project has a way it's grouped together, which is what is the project life cycle. So you investigate goals and issues, you analyze information. From the, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to group everything into the project life cycle, the sort of responsibilities you might expect. It's not, the list is not finite, there's quite a lot. I just used a few examples, which will be on the next slide. So the first stage usually, some of these things I've merged them together because Sometimes in some companies, they merge them together, the top one. So this bit is a life cycle. Ooh, I didn't want to go there, but that's a life cycle. That's a life cycle. But initiation could be one, planning. Some people could just say planning. But initiation is starting. So just imagine us building to the end of a project, yeah? When you're talking about the software. So at this point in a project, as a business analyst, you're, when they say you need to ascertain the feasibility of the solution, so they'll tell you, we want to build this house. Is it worth us building? So this is where the business case, you will be the one going to do that research to find out, is it justified? You will speak to, interview, interview the bosses. Why? What is our current state? Why? What is going to happen in the future? And you start pulling all this information together. That's an example. You, you, you also need to um, ID the scope. So when you say build a house, are we talking, like I said, the scope? You have to, when you're working on a project, the scope, which is the breadth of what you're doing, is very important to home in on that scope because that's where the costs start going. So someone that said, I want to build a house, and meanwhile, the scope, the analyst didn't ask, is it a bungalow? And then they dig a foundation at the start that will take a, you're already wasting money. So that's where you iron out the scope at the beginning. You understand the business case, that's a justification. Next is the analysis. So now we know it's a bungalow. You know, you now start asking now the requirements. This is the next phase, which is, so like I said, it could either be the initiation, then the planning, or it's combined, I've combined it. Analysis will now be go, okay, now that we know it's a bungalow, what do you want the windows to look like? What color? That's asking requirements as the builder. Is it possible, is the land, as the pl um, planning authority? These are your stakeholders. Are you gonna give us permission? So let's say you're a BA, that's the scope. You are going about asking the requirements. Those are um, analyzing the needs or requirements. Then sometimes the person say, I don't want it to look like my previous house. <coughs> so that is where you now need to go and say, as is, when in a project they say, we want a change. We don't like what the current st state is. Do you now start hearing the word of as is and to be? A lot of people say, what is this as is and to be doing interviews? So as is, is you need to know, you document, this is what the house looked like. It was two windows, whatever. This is it. You don't want it to look like. So where do you want the third window to be? So old plan, new plan. You draw up those documents using different tools. So that's where the as is analysis is, and then the gap. You say the gap analysis is what make what do we need to give it that extra? What is the difference? So that's the gap. Yeah? I'm trying to use terms. So quickly, design, so you now know. So that's the next phase. The design and development is another phase, the next phase of a software. So now you take this template, go to the um, IT guys. I've given you, this is how the house would look. This is all, maybe the architect. Yeah, actually in business we have architects. The architect will go drop the specification and everything like that. So at this point, you're at the development stage. You're going back to the stakeholder who gave you the project, and then you come back and say, oh, uh, the architect says, though you said you wanted to look like this, because of the fact that the um, what do they say, beam or whatever, it's not going to hold that. So we might need to change the design of the window. You run back to So that's when you say the design and development. You're going back and forth between either the IT people 
all. So even like I said in this project, quickly moving on, then testing. So now they built it. Maybe the house would not be a good example because you won't start slamming the house to see whether it will fall. <laughs> but, but in a project, the next phase is you've now built a system. Before you give it to people to start using, you need to test it. So you, as the architect, you know what people want. While you're asking the people as a business analyst what you want, you tell them what would, what would make you say this house is what you wanted or this computer. So say it has to be that when I open the windows, it opens out wide. When I do this, so you should have asked them at the point where you're doing your requirements, what is the criteria to pass that test? So the test test will now come. That's the testing phase. You'll now take everything and try and break it, push the windows back, turn it upside down. Does it still stand? Then that's, once everything is ticked, you go back to the person, obtain sign off. So you're getting to the point. So when you have had all those testing phases completed, then your project is nearly, you're ready. So now you can say, we can go and hide, hand over the keys to the owner of the property or the development. At that point, you can answer telling them, you have a, this is the contract with the builder, maintainers, you've given them the keys, you've got three years NHBC or something warranty. So all those maintenance things, make sure every three, um, two years you have your gas safety check, your electricals. So now, that is the software they developed. So you, have, have I made sense in a sense mm -hmm. using that? So I'm going to quickly rush through. So explaining all that to give you an idea of what a BA does. What is my typical day? So I'll go into the office. Depending on the stage, which is what I said. So as a business analyst, you could be brought in by the time they start build, building the thing. And maybe they started building up that house without knowing that they needed windows. And they said, oh, actually, we drew it. They gave the plan information, but we didn't say, think of how, whether we wanted um, the blood windows, or whether we wanted um, PVC, or we wanted lead. So you could be called in at that stage to go back. So that's why I say it's not typical that you come and you have to start at the requirement stage. You could be brought in at any phase. So you could go. One of the important, you arrange meetings. You facilitate workshops. So you have to arrange a meeting room get the person, book an appointment, blah, blah, blah. You meet with the stakeholders. You, sometimes you have to visit the client site. Sometimes, like I said, third parties. That's why sometimes you get BH traveling. The people in India, sometimes talking on the phone doesn't make sense. They'll tell you, get on the plane, go and explain to them. So you could be traveling. You could be preparing reviews. You could be just resolving conflicts. So the chief architect said, this is how you said this one. You, as a BA, will say, no, 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 calm down. You resolve. Actually, I was explaining to someone earlier. As a BA, depending on, I had to mediate between two directors in meetings, two female directors who could not see eye to eye, and I had to sit there and try and get them to say what they want and agree and carry that. So you could be mediating. You could have difficult stakeholders. So you could be managing. What? Sorry, you got five minutes. Do you okay. Want that? for QA or something. Yes, okay. So you could be doing all this thing, managing conflicts, etc. And that's the typical role of a business analyst. Key considerations. Key considerations. I'm going to rush through. And like I said, Q&A, because we don't have more time, I'll be outside So if you have questions, but I'll try and leave a minute. BA artifacts, and I think there's some important values, principles, to make a good BA, which I think I would like to share. Because a lot of projects fail due to the requirements not being gathered correctly. And it costs a lot of companies, a lot. And why? Because the requirements are not well defined. And this leads to wasted investment. As much as it is you want your contract to be renewed, but my, I don't care if my contract is I want to get the job done. I think you should have that basic principle. You should be able to apply an holistic um, approach. So when they say holistic, see things in the business, they, say, they use the word TO people. So you need to look at the technology, the organization, people, processes. When they say processes, how does it work? Look at all those things, yeah? You suspend, you spend most of the day being pulled. You need to be able to prioritize. One of the basic fundamentals to keep in mind is that the business analyst is not about completing the task in time. So it's not about rushing and getting the job done. It's about providing quality solutions to meet the requirements 
that your user wants. You're trying to deliver something to someone, and they task you with that effort to try and convey that information correctly to whoever is carrying out that project. So tips, make sure you are clear on what is involved, who is running the project. Yeah. Okay. Who is running? So I think that's the end, really. We've got um, three minutes on my time. <laughs> we have a sub session here. Okay. Just now, so okay. Very, very sorry. Yeah. That's it, anyway. Very sorry, guys.